Today we'll be having Sri Ganesha Puja, followed by <coughs> Raja Rajeshwari. So many names have been described of the Goddess, especially Adi Shankaracharya called her Raja Rajeshwari, meaning she is the queen of all the queens. Also, <coughs> for Mother Mary, they have used this title in the West. <coughs> These ideas have come from the pagan religion, as I have told you before, and that they didn't come by the description of Mother Mary in the Bible. That shows that <coughs> there has been a lot of changes into the script of Holy Bible. Also there has been a lot of changes in the script of Indian scriptures, even Gita. And that's how the derailment in every religion started. And the intellectuals took advantage of it, uh, started projecting their own idea, saying things, describing things which were absolutely against divine power. We are all very fortunate people on this earth that you have discovered the reality. And you see that all these things which were mythological are true. All the things that are intellectual is not true. Also whatever are used for the purpose of dividing people from each other are not true. Because we believe in all the religions, that's why every religious person, so-called, is against us. Because you are supposed to believe only in one religion and fight all the rest. If you believe in all religions, that means you are absolutely not religious. This is the concept. And that shocks them that we believe in all the religions and we respect all the incarnations and that we believe in the integration of all these deities. Regarding Ganesha, it must have been a big revelation for you people who are from the Western countries. Even in the North, I don't find Ganesha is so much worshipped as worshipped in the South, especially in this area and also in Maharashtra. Because in Maharashtra we have <coughs> eight Swayambhu Ganeshas and they all believe in it. It is now said that it is all blind faith and this and that. But now you have seen the Ganesha standing behind me, within me. <coughs> it's just to prove that there is a deity called Ganesha. Uh, you'll be given those photographs where Ganesha is half face sitting here and the rest is my sari and all that. But all this is to convince you that there is a deity which is Sri Ganesh and that he acts, works through Muladhara. This knowledge was known to Indian people thousands of years back. This Kuchipuri dancing started 7th century before Christ. So you can imagine the concept of Ganesha must have been thousands of years back. So the people were very much evolved spiritually in this country 
and they knew what are the deities are, how they look like, what are their functions are. Though it was a secret knowledge for the general public, but whatever the saint said was accepted because there was no ego about it. I have been trying to locate why in the West people develop so much of ego. Still I have not been able to find out the basic reason. Why this kind of aggressiveness comes in uh, through the ego part. One can say that competitiveness and all that, but this has been the history in the West that even the people who followed Christ, which was nothing but humility, uh, absolutely writ large, everywhere, still those people were so aggressive. Now the humility is the main thing one has to understand. And you'll be surprised the humility is called as Vinay, which is the quality of Sri Ganesha, Vinayaka. Vidya Vinayana Shupati. Vidya means the knowledge is only decorated with humility. So the humility you saw yesterday of these great artists and the great gurus who were there. The guru invited me to his academy and he made all kinds of uh, offerings as they would do to a goddess. I was so much touched that ready acceptance of me and of Sajjava. Even this Kalakshetra which was dominated by Theosophical Society, though this lady didn't bother so much about Theosophical Society and she had created this big auditorium and all that and everything she dedicated to art, she didn't allow Theosophical Society to enter into it. Despite all that, how they accepted me, all of them, you can see so clearly their devotion and understanding. To be humble with a saint is absolutely an unwritten law of this country. And a saint is not to be challenged, not to be dominated. Whatever the saint says must be accepted. So the first quality that Ganesha should give us is Vinay, Vinay meaning the humility. The humility is not superficial, like we go on saying, sorry or excuse me, I'm afraid, not that way. It's not watching, it's not just a lip service, but from within the humility has to come. Now the humility is, of course, is always marred by ego and the ego just keeps you afloat and you never understand that you have been egoistical. Even when I talk about ego, people think that mother is saying about somebody else there. They never think it's me who has this ego. So Ganesha is the killer of ego because humility is the only thing that really can neutralize your ego. To humble down yourself, you have to see what. For example, in this country you have come very simple people, you see, living very simply, they don't have all these uh, sophisticated things around them, eating with their hands, eating on the plantain leaves, you see. And according to certain ladies who have lived here, the Westerners, they think they are all uh, primitive. But see the way they have developed this art. This kind of swiftness and this kind of, even jumping this kind, you cannot achieve. Now, what is the reason for this kind of working? Is humility towards harm. Art is to be respected. 
a guru is to be respected. Respect is the only way to learning anything. That is sort of ingrained uh, in an Indian blood, I think, that you must obey your guru implicitly, implicitly. And this guru is training so many people there, so many girls there. not for anything but just to express his art. He doesn't get much money, I could see that. They have very little provision and also he doesn't charge too much. But the dedication he has is like the dedication of Sri Ganesha to his mother. And the way he is completely drawn into it. All other things are not important. So for humility you have to withdraw your attention from other things. This is an extremely important thing. If your attention is going to your other problems, this, that, or if you are trying to come to Sahaja Yoga through other channels, it's not going to work out. You have to humble down in your heart, absolutely humble down. He's innocent, that's why he's humble. If you are not innocent, then you cannot be humble. Sign of innocence is humility. A good child, a nice innocent child is extremely obedient. Whatever you tell them, they just obey. I know my grandchildren, once we were going to Nepal and it was very cold there, and their mother said they won't take anything on their heads. I said, I'll do it in one, one minute. I just called them, gave them pieces of ordinary cloth, I said, you have to cover your head, all right. We put it on their head, put it properly, fixed it up. They were looking a little queer, but they didn't mind. This is what is missing. And that's why we find the depth is less. Not just only the conditionings, I would not say the conditioning, people are out of conditioning. Even Indians have become like that. It's difficult for them to be humble, very difficult. Or you may call it Western influence or maybe that they have forgotten their past. But humility is so important, like I must tell you, from our childhood, though I was born in a Christian family, we had to touch the Mother Earth and ask for forgiveness first, to put it to your head. Then touch the feet of your parents and all the elders in the family, isn't it so? Touch everybody's feet uh, who are elder in the family. Even some old servants, you see, who had looked after our elder brothers and all that, touch their feet. But that humility is lacking. And that dignity that elders should have is also not there. But whatever it is, it was our duty to touch everybody's feet and not to discuss the elders. So this will create such a beautiful atmosphere in Sahaja Yoga if you insist that, am I humble in doing this? Just ask a question, have I been humble in doing this or in saying this? Now the problems are criticizing the leaders. They are leaders because they deserve it. The day I find they are no good, I'll throw them out. Also you know that very well. But there is no humility. Then the humility is replaced by ego. 
and that ego creates an ego in the leaders. The leaders become egoistical and so many leaders are thrown out. I mean, I just don't know where the balance has to come, whether I should blame the members or the leaders. So, Mother has appointed them as leaders, so let us be humble. After all, there must be some reason why Mother has asked them to be the leaders. Why should we try to quarrel with them, find faults? Like a union, we form. So Shri Ganesha, who is so humble and his ganas are even more humble in a way because he won't tolerate any gana who is not humble to mother. With a little movement of the eyes, they are there to fight and to do whatever it is they are suggested. And they understand every angle of the eye of their mother, what is to be done. So this kind of dedication only can make you deeper and deeper. Now maybe that the way we know about that in the West we have to spread out more, we have to advertise more, we have to talk about ourselves more, we have to boast about ourselves more. The more you do it, the more successful. That's what you see every day. They boast, I believe. You see, who are you to believe or not to believe? Who are you to say this? But sort of, see, your image has to go like that, a man of uh, great uh, personality or some sort of a big profile. You create a profile, absolutely artificial, nonsensical and very surprising to such a profile which is so artificial. People bow. Maybe they are also artificial. That's why they bow to these artificial people. I'm surprised. I mean, these are well-known crooks. People know they are crooks, they have done all kinds, but still they will prostrate before them. Because maybe that they want some sort of a material advantage out of it or I don't know, some sort of an artificial advantage. Even a taking a photograph with such a man is regarded as something very great. So all these ideas must be seen through by Sahaja Yogis. They have to see through this joke, this drama, what's going on and also reflect it back and introspect and see, I hope I don't have this in me. Sometimes we laugh at others but we ourselves are in it. So once we start introspecting, we see within ourselves, yes, this is there. There are certain Sahaja Yogis in certain countries, I've always been reported as Suddenly they say, Mother has given me special powers. Or they say, I am Mahamataji, also there was one like that, Mahamataji. I've never said I am Mataji even. You people call me that, I've never said that. But he said I am Mahamataji. You can call him mad, you can call him anything, but it is definitely his you. His arrogance has prospered in such a way that he doesn't see what he's talking about. This is how also you pamper the ego of your leaders by attacking him. The more you attack him, he reacts and when he reacts, his ego goes on pumping like that. <laughs> 